One of the awesome new features that come with GoPro Hero 11 Black is the new star trails effect, which lets you capture the stars traveling across the dark sky. In the past, getting effect like this would require lots of post-production and specific editing software. But now, with GoPro Hero 11 Black, everything happens within the camera. And all you have to do is just to press the shutter button. But before we go any further, let's focus on some basics. If you want to record stars, you're gonna need a really stable tripod. Because you want to have your camera perfectly still throughout the entire night. I personally use Manfrotto B3 because it gives me that stability and is designed for traveling. I simply love it. But you can use simply anything as long as it's gonna make your camera steady. Secondly, when you record a time lapse with your GoPro, the battery gonna last for around 3 hours. That's gonna give you like 10 seconds of your final video. If it's not enough for you and you want to have more recording time, then you're gonna need to have a power bank. I personally prefer using GoPro Volta because thanks to it, I can charge my GoPro while recording and I don't have to worry about moisture and humidity. If there's gonna be slight rain or fog, I don't have to worry about it so much. So when it comes to the settings, I think that GoPro has done a really good job setting it up basically for you. Many settings are locked, but you still can change resolution, shutter speed, ISO, etc. For resolution, I recommend selecting 5.3K for the best video quality and 4x3 aspect ratio. It will allow you to vertically move your frame so you can have some motion in your shot. Shutter speed, well, I prefer to set it to 30 seconds because your camera can capture more light into the sensor. Lastly, ISO setting. This setting increases your camera's light sensitivity. Ideally, you always want to keep it as low as possible, etc. But for star projects, you should try 800 ISO. I think it's a sweet spot because you can see lots of stars and there isn't too much noise in your shot. So on our first night, we went to northern parts of Thailand to get away from the city lights as far as possible. We traveled to a beautiful province called Pre. This place was just perfect as we seen beautiful landscape and hundreds of stars. I set my camera to short star trails and this is the result. To me personally, I think that short trail setting looks like there was no effect in it whatsoever. It's just a bit too short and it just looks like a regular night lapse, so I don't really recommend it. So on the second day, we moved to a second hotel which happened to be just a few kilometers away from us. Once again, we had beautiful scenery in front of us. I prepared my setup in advance, waiting for the nightfall. On that night, I set my camera to long star trails and turns out, it's so much better. I think that the long star trail fag is a perfect middle ground. With this setting, the stars finally leave that trail behind them and it looks magical. Please compare now the short trail length versus the long one and see which one you like more.
So on the third day, we packed our things and drove all the way to the outskirts of city called Chiang Mai. At the time, I was a little bit skeptical about it as it was quite close to the city and some small town in the distance. I set my camera to max trail setting, pointed it into the darkest part of the sky and hoped for the best. It turns out that in Chiang Mai, there's a natural phenomena called sea fog, which covered half of my frame, ruining my shot. Max length setting continuously records the stars traveling across the sky, resembling as if a circle. But what's interesting is that the trail will never disappear. And now compare all three star trail lengths and see for yourself how they differ from each other. I must say, I was a little bit disappointed with my footage because of that sea fog, so I decided to do it again. This time around, I decided to press my shutter button during sunset when the light was still out there. I was just hoping that I can get as much time as only possible before the sea fog happens again to ruin my shot. At the time, I had no idea that my footage will be so bright throughout the entire night. It seems like max setting remembers all the light sources and it never goes away. In this case, my sky never got dark. Please remember about it before you use the setting, otherwise it can ruin your shot. Alright guys, so for today's video that's gonna be that's it. Hopefully I managed to show you what's the difference between different star tray lengths and that you can learn from my mistakes that I done while working on this project. Thank you so much for watching guys and see you in the next one. Bye.